Hello, and welcome to the last step. Lost count of how many weeks this is, but uh, yeah, Frank should be joining us here from uh, Portugal, I believe. We can get him up on the screen, but I think you can see behind me uh, is our updated picture of our studio, which is underway. So I gave you an inside shot so you can see uh, see how we were coming along. Nicholas actually made a video that we're going to wait to premiere one of these weeks so you can see the, uh, the whole progress of our Camus studio here. There's Frank. <laughs> hey, Frank. I had a little difficulty here, but now it works. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good, Frank, as always. So you're, the snow has melted, I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're having a cold front here. Nice. You're looking good. Thank you. So do you. Yeah. <laughs> Popping collars and everything. I love it, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to catch up with Frank and, yeah, give, uh, give kind of where we are at here. And it was funny. I, I went into the shower uh, pretty much after our morning meetings. We've been waking up early, as I've told you guys in our last shows. And woke up real early and then later on I jumped in the shower and I was like praying on I haven't got a chance to even connect with Frank because he's been uh you know looking at houses and David and Lisa are over there and he's just been doing his thing so we haven't had our daily calls like we always do and I kind of went into the shower and the other day I'd pulled this this card uh the Course in Miracle cards you know a quote for the day and when I jumped in the shower I heard this line again and I was like oh that might be what my show has to be about. And the line is, it takes great learning to understand that all things, events, encounters, and circumstances are helpful. And it's from the Development of Trust, the Manual for Teachers. And when I thought about it, I was like, like so, I got in the shower and then so many parables even came to me. And like even your famous one that we said last week, the, the famous Swiss sailor Francisco's boat in the... Uh, thinking the chain broke and the world was out to get him and then come to find out it was all for him and so I thought of some other things and it was funny then I get out of the shower and I walk down to the studio and I walk in and I said hey how's it going Nicholas it's going good there was one glitch but uh but <laughs> Zach is on what we call the mound behind on the computer he goes but Zach handled it great a little bit of healing he goes that's the way it goes. You have to have these things happen for learning to happen. I was like, that's what my show's about. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, just listening to Ricky's show, I was like, oh, just the way she talks about it and shares her journey and the things that she has actually stepped into to expand her mind. And oh, my God, that song. I don't know. There's something about every time Ricky sings, I just like I was in tears. I actually went into the sanctuary to listen. And yeah, there was a few of us in there in total tears. And Ricky, if you watched probably one of my first shows, she was the first one that I met in the community when she was in Manhattan. And I heard her sing a song at one of David's gatherings. And I was like, so she was one of the guiding lights that brought me in this direction. So it was, uh, it was really cool. That was an encounter that, that led me this way. It was funny, one of the ones I think I've shared on my show before because a friend of mine here actually injured himself. And it was like, in those moments, it's always like, wait, how can this be? you know, the most helpful or how could it actually be for the best. And as a result of that, he's been, you know, stepping into sharing so many stories and parables and extending where he is right now, recuperating from his, his little injury. And I had literally a month, I think, before I met David and Ricky in Manhattan, I was in my house in Connecticut and I had a cold and something happened and I popped a hole in my eardrum. And let me tell you, if you've never had a hole in your eardrum, which probably most of you haven't, it is extremely painful. <laughs> it pushes your pain threshold to a whole new level. And I was like, but this was prior to my experience. Like I had an experience similar to what Ricky shared where she had this light come into her mind. And I knew at that moment that I was like, I was in prayer. I was like, wait, this is, this is for something. Like this isn't for me just to be in pain. And sure enough, months later, I started to travel pretty much the world. And the next year I took 44 flights. And prior to that, I hated to fly. And the reason I hated to fly is because I always had so much pressure in my head. I would get on the plane and for some reason I would just be like, it was misery. And now the next time I got into a flight after this hole in my eardrum, there was just a little noise in my ear. It would go, wee. <laughs> and it was the pressure escaping from my head. <laughs> and I never had a problem again. Every time I flew, it was like 
So it was cool just to remember those type of things with with every event, every encounter. It was like even what we're doing now and what we have. We had a little meeting this morning with even Mexico and the ones here and Alexa is back in our studio. She had had a trip home and came back to join the community crew here in the Camas studio. And even those encounters, it was like, you know, this is Ricky was explaining, you know, about her relationship with Emily right now, like moving towards those things. It's like, that's actually where the gift is, you know, in this line, it takes great learning to understand. And that's been my prayer lately. I want to understand. And how do I understand? And the learning actually takes me taking steps into relationship towards people that I normally wouldn't go towards, facing things, coming on camera, starting a show, starting a morning show and next week or whenever it starts, the things that would actually, I wouldn't have done is what expands me. I had this, I think it was Emerson had this little uh, card on my computer back home and it was like, my life starts outside my comfort zone. And that's where the discomfort comes, moving towards the ones I normally wouldn't. And there's certain ones that I communicate with all the time and now they become my gifts the ones that I used to have some kind of a resistance to it would be like oh I have to go towards them so what happened I would start going towards them and the first thing I would say I would be like hey I'm feeling this this and this and get it out of the way and then we would join in this collaboration or whatever it was that would completely lift us up and I would see that that is the fear the fear that I'm stepping through you know they always say step push into the fear and you'll see that it's not there this is it you know this is in this path and recovery is all about relationships and that's what I'm being called to is like step towards this each time and like I even have Susanna sitting here with me today just to be with me on my shows like I did last week and I called her in I don't know whether I will this week we'll see how that goes but even the idea of getting into a marriage terrified me I would never commit to one person for however long and open myself up entirely that terrified me but in this process, that was what spirit guided me to. And I was allowed to do that to expand my mind, to actually step through all those things. It's like, yeah, it's been quite a gift. <laughs> so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to set the tone with that line. I, I've been actually saying it to a lot of the, uh, the ones here with things that, that are going on or seem to come up. It's like staying in that place of remembering, you know, that it all is for good. But it's like, it's when I move towards it. Me and Andy are having an assignment right now where we're, I'm just calling him to attention and, you know, we're doing some mind training together and having calls with people that he hasn't had calls with before that I may have done before and worked on and even going through emails or certain things. It's like we go through these and it's like, hey, this is what's going to make us expand or this is what's going to actually step through the fear. And yeah, it's been, it's been quite a, uh, quite a journey the last the last couple of weeks so yeah how's it going there Frank for you maybe you have something to say about about our line here it's interesting it's uh, changing a lot just uh, but um, you know I, I uh, I've been going through a lot of doubt thoughts again and because things are going very fast and uh, you know, suddenly I'm thinking, oh my God, now we got all this thing. What if people don't show up? You know, what if we don't fill the place? And, and, but it's great because I have, you know, two very mighty companions with me that I can share this with. <laughs> uh, but I have, um, you know, I, I realized the, the thing what you were talking about, you know, I was always also in the 12 step, so, sort of my, my, you know, we have to let go absolutely. It says in the big book, you know, we have to let go absolutely. What does that mean? You know, and many people read that in the 12 steps and we read it at every meeting because I think it's in, yeah, it's in, in the passage we read every time. But, you know, you, you don't realize, I never realized to what extent, you know, until I came to the, to the course, how, you know, you just let go of everything. So I go, you know, I always push myself to the edge and then I jump. You know, and then, <laughs> and then I push myself to the edge. So that's my pitch. You know, that's what I do. But I also, you know, realized I'm, you know, I'm an addict, and I want what I want when I want it, and that's also enlightenment. So one of the, you know, things that Davis always says is, you know, this is the fast track. Yeah, I want the fast track. I want it fast. And my prayer, you know, and I go for walks. You say, 
I mean, I don't use these words, but it's almost like bring it on, bring it on. You know, I'm <laughs> David said, be careful what you're praying for, you know, because, um, <laughs> so, so now I'm just bringing the healing, you know, <laughs> mm. because uh, as I said, things have gone fast. You know, the way we've purchased these two properties, I mean, one, one we've, the offers on the second one, uh, uh, you, we found another one now that's going to be more of a community house. So we have two properties. It's a lot of money, you know. <laughs> things are like, what, what if, you know, what if it turns out everybody's so excited, you know, it's like, when, when is, is it going to be ready? And we get these, these uh, I mean, David is bombarded by uh, mails and, and messages all the time. And then I thought, what if these people, are like me, suddenly they start having doubt thoughts and then we're going to have these, these two houses and they're going to be empty and, you know, stuff like that. But I share it and, 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 and it's, um, uh, but it's that, um, you know, it, it's that, that, that kind of, you know, like uh, spirit uses everything and this impatience that I have. Um, I want what I want and I want it now. It can be, and and this this uh, you know this drive to, to to get it is is really to my advantage. But sometimes I just get a little impatient with it all, and then it happens, and they get overwhelmed. And <laughs> <laughs> you're just explaining the spiritual journey, Frank, in a, in one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get yeah, overwhelmed. And then you come back. And then suddenly, you know, things quieten down, and I sat there, and things are quiet, and I think, what am I going to do there? You know. Because, uh, cause, you know, they go to bed a little earlier and then I sit there by myself and I think, oh, what, what now, you know? And I got really depressed. But last night we watched it. We stayed up really late. And, uh, and, but I was so depressed. I was so depressed. And, and, and then this morning, it, it looks like we're all going through Holland. So, ooh, I'm all excited again. Um, I think David is going to explain all that uh, later. Yeah. But we, we're, you know, things are are changing very fast and and I like that but I also yeah. um you know it's it's sort of coming from all sides like you say and I'm being pushed out of my uh um comfort zone comfort zone and you know it's, uh, you know sharing the space sharing a bathroom and I'm not <laughs> really used to it so <laughs> yeah you're being pushed outside of your comfort zone that you're normal to but this is the this is the answer to your bring it on prayer you know you've had it since Pretty much since I met you and it's funny because someone here asked me the other day where do I get my drive like and I can seem to now like focus this inspiration or, or drive like from the studio to different areas and you know I see it as a gift like it came like you said coming from a 12-step background and addiction and that there was a, a desire for something so strong in the mind that like we went after everything with with everything we had you know, mm -hmm. and now it's being focused, you know, and we're taking that widespread light and actually focusing it on the one desire of, you know, purpose. And it was funny because yeah. I, yeah. I, I had a thought of you this morning when I said, yeah, Frank, you know, when you shared that, you know, I'm going through another bout of, uh, you know, doubt thoughts and this. And I said, you know, Frank has, <laughs> you know, you have this prayer and it's so deep that these angels are called to you, you know, and, and I had this thought, I'm like, Oh, it's like, you know, if it happened any other way, it would be so, so scary. Like it would be like you take Gary Renard. He had Art and Persa show up on his couch. Like if that happened to you or I would probably be in an insane asylum. <laughs> like, telling people, yeah, these guys showed up on my couch. But you have David and Lisa showed up on your couch. <laughs> it just happens to be. <laughs> but it's the same thing. You have these angels showing up to have you take these steps, you know, that, to do the learning, to understand it through all things, events and encounters. And buying properties and whatever it is it's like yeah you've taken quite a few lately and yeah it's really yeah, yeah. it's really great to watch and see the see the strength yeah those are those are big steps the the um you know the thing is that of course you know i always think you know i want i want that peace you know i want that peace and um and but i'm you know a lot of the things i'm doing uh, or the state that I'm on, there's a lot of undoing, and, and the undoing is, um, you know, it's painful, and um, and I I don't like that. I just want the peace without <laughs> without the undoing. <laughs> the undoing feels like a hangover. <laughs> mm. You know, so I just 
I was telling Lisa this morning, you know, I thought enlightenment was like a shot of heroin. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you often say that line, each time an idol falls, you will weep. Each time you're crying to me on the phone, you're like, I know this line and I know this is it. (laughs) And it's funny, we keep focusing on those things. And I forget what section it was I read the other day. And it was like, actually where we're placing our faith, you know, whether it's in idols or in purpose. And I think we have these ones surrounding us to to bring us back to that. So that feels great. Yeah. Yeah, so I had a couple of uh, of things bookmarked. And it's actually, this is great. This is one that I I bookmarked from the happy dream section. And it's just a couple of lines that, like, I just love to read. Because this, my, this, this line of understanding was in, you know, this prayer, like, let me understand. As I shared on the last show, there's this line in the 12-step book that says, you know, once we have entered the world of the Spirit, we continued to grow in understanding and effectiveness because I don't have to, you know, the understood, like Ricky talked about on her show, I don't need to know. Understanding is just, like, I'm trying to know. I looked up understanding uh, earlier today, and it was like personal interpretation. Okay, I don't want that anymore. You know, this is what all we're doing is practicing over and over to get another interpretation from Holy Spirit. So if I can have that understanding, I can let go of anything I think it is. I think it's the third lesson that said, I don't understand what anything means. Yet that part of my mind still tries to understand all of it. Events, occurrences, anything that is presented to me tries to make sense of it when it can't, that part of the mind. So it's like this constant process of my section, setting the goal. One of the other ones was responsibility for sight. I was looking up different areas where it actually uses the word understand and it just somehow really relates to what I've been going through lately. So the happy dream, this is, might be good for you, Frank. You're going to like this one. <laughs> Prepare you now for the undoing of what never was. If you already understood the difference between truth and illusion, the atonement would have no meaning. The holy instant, the holy relationship, the Holy Spirit's teaching, and all the means by which salvation is accomplished would have no purpose. For they are all but aspects of the plan to change your dreams of fear to happy dreams, from which you waken easily to knowledge. Yeah, Yeah, the thing, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think one of my problems was uh, because it's so unusual what's happening now, is that um, I, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I want to know, I want to understand. And, uh, and, and because sh- things change rapidly and because, yeah, I just don't know. And I think that's, that was one of the sources of, uh, of, of my discomfort, you know, when you, <laughs> when you called yesterday. And it says, oh, are you? We were talking about it. oh my God, I'm so depressed, you know, <laughs> I didn't know what it was about, but it's about that, you know, it's, uh, I think that's, that's it. That's what it is, is I, I wasn't aware of it, but, but I, you know, I want to know what this is going to look like. And, um, and I don't know, you know, I mean, I, you know, the, the, I'm getting reassured by David that, yes, this is going to be big, you know, but I want to know what it's going to look like. So that was good. You know, while you read it, I said, whoa, that's my problem, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah, that part that we always want to know what happens and what we have to do, even what I've been practicing myself and with other ones here, is actually strengthening that part of the mind, which it seems to come unnatural, but it's the most natural thing to actually join with someone and to share the miracle, but it seems so hard in the moment. And it's like even sharing, I keep asking you to share that boat story because that's what's happening over and over again, is you believe the chain is being broke by someone else. That belief that outside forces are pitted against me, that there Mm -hmm. is a possibility of separate interests or desires. It's all the same thing happening in our mind over and over. So that's part of this whole section. I actually had the responsibility for sight. It's like, I'm gonna read that now. This first paragraph, every time I read it because when you talk about this depression or you know these thoughts that keep coming back into your mind it's like 
this is the choice. This is the point. The, the, the point. You know, again, back to Ricky's show, I loved her show today. She had that moment where she saw that it was a choice with the relationship. And of course, we're in relationship to everything and everyone. So it's like in that moment when I make that choice of, okay, I'm going to choose the ego or I'm going to choose the idol or I'm going to choose whatever it is. And that's going to take me away from what I really truly desire. But it's like we have repeated how little is asked of you to learn this course. It is the same small willingness you need to have your whole relationship transformed to joy. The little gift you offer to the Holy Spirit for which he gives you everything. The very little on which salvation rests. The tiny change of mind by which the crucifixion is changed to the resurrection. And being true, it is so simple that it cannot fail to be completely understood. Rejected, yes, but not ambiguous. And if you choose against it now, it will not be because it is obscure, but rather that this little cost see how <clears throat> but rather that this little cost seemed, in your judgment, to be too much to pay for peace. So this is exactly what you're talking about when you say, I want the peace. But truthfully, in our mind, what we're doing is we're continuing to choose this other thing because of this line. We're actually choosing against it because we think the price is too high. There was, I mm -hmm. think it's, Chris, forget the Christian writer, C, C. S. I forget his name. But he says, how easily we, we, are, we are satisfied, like what we actually choose, whether it's sex or for us it was drugs and alcohol. We would choose these things and seem that we were living the life. We would like satisfy ourselves like, oh yeah, I'm living the life when we're actually giving everything up for these idols. So yeah, there's something about this, this line that blows me away. Rejected yet, but not ambiguous. Because to easily understood, it says, is clear. It says that in the setting the goal section too. When it's actually, it's so, so simple and so clear that we avoid it and make, make it seem totally outrageous. We watched that movie um, Contact the other day and we watched that scene, Jason shared it during one of the retreats for the, uh, the spiritual awakening part of the, uh, the movie. And there's, when she's in the courtroom, she talks about Occam's razor, and it's the most easily understood, or the simplest is usually the right explanation of anything. And I, when, I, when I heard that again this time through, I'm like, well, that makes sense for the creation of everything. Like, does it make more sense that everything's one, or does it make more sense that it's a huge fragmented multiplicity of a world with a million dimensions and all this? It's like, we choose that each time we go with this other thought system. And it's like, yeah, so that's why I actually read this one over and over. I don't know how much time we have, but I have one more thing to read. Did you have anything on that, Frank? No, no go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm getting excited yeah, now. I can see that. Okay. <laughs> this is from uh, chapter 30, the new beginning, which is our next online retreat. And it's from the section five, which is the only purpose. I read this in one of our morning uh, meditations. I was guided to it. And it's like, the real world is the state of mind in which the only purpose of the world is seen to be forgiveness. Fear is not its goal, for the escape from guilt becomes its aim. The value of forgiveness is perceived and takes the place of idols, which are sought no longer, for their gifts are not held dear. No rules are idly set and no demands are made of anyone or anything to twist and fit into the dream of fear. Instead, there is a wish to understand all things created as they really are, and it is recognized that all things must be forgiven and then understood. Whew. Yeah. Is that the word of the Lord. <laughs> so, that paragraph, oh. That paragraph. Go ahead. Did you have something to say, Frank? No, go ahead. Because I know you have something. <laughs> Just... No, I mean, this is exactly what we're talking about, the value of forgiveness. And it's funny because when I read this, it takes great learning to understand that all things, this is forgiveness. We have to actually face the things and take the steps to see, to forgive them and actually see that they were nothing. They were, they were illusions, you know, whether it's having the inspiration and then stepping towards it. And then angels showing up and holding your hand and saying, look, here we are. When, when, I, when I saw Jackie, when, another thing, like when we see these ones that have gone before us and 
like we have this trust. Every time I see Jackie when she came back to the monastery this time, as soon as I see her, I start crying. Because the first moment I had with her was in an expression session. And I sat there and I had a bunch of stuff coming up and I looked in her eyes and all I could see was, it's okay. Like, it's all good. Like, there's nothing to worry about. And we have those ones. And you have David and Lisa there. You have me, Frank, and another 60 people or how many ever we have on here today. But it's that part of it that that we're allowed to let go of these, the gifts that they're not held dear. We're not holding on to those things anymore that we use. This is the, you know, the first thing, this is from the, uh, the, um, the trust section, you know, the development and trust. And in that, it's the sorting out of the value and the valueless. And that's all we're doing over and over is just showing each other that, look, you don't want this. You don't, this isn't what you value. You value the relationship. We value this. And it's like, whew. Yeah, there, there is, uh, you know, it's, I mean, for me, it's a painful process because I see, I want, you know, because I, I, I see how much attachment I still have to certain things. Um, and so unwinding for them is like, a, it's almost like a purge. And this purge is painful. You know, it, it is, uh, it feels like almost like a withdrawal. And, um, and that's what I'm going through now. And sometimes, you know, I'm in this state that uh, I say, you know, I, I want to let go of it all. And then some, and now I'm in the state where I say, Ooh, no, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm quite ready, you know, because, um, because, I, because I still see some value in some of these things. And that's when, you know, I'm being told that, but that's okay because spirit will use that. Mm. You know, spirit will use that and, and you can go out in the world and you can do these things you still need to do. Um, and then when I'm out in the world, these things, you know, like you witness, they fall away with my relationship with Emma and, you know, my, uh, my attachments. And I pray for these attachments to, to, um, to leave. But when, once they leave, uh, I, I am, it feels like loss to me. You know, it, I, mm. I, it feels like a loss. So I have to be, you know, I, I need to say that cause I don't want to, um, you know, pretend that that's not there mm. for me. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is all it is. We keep doing, you know, seemingly doing these things or taking these steps until we actually value the surrender, you know, Mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. heart the place breaks I don't know all the lyrics mm -hmm. now I was thinking of Ricky's song mm -hmm. yeah and there's moments when you know I really but it's just it's a process I guess you know in, in that sense I'm still very much at the beginning where I have to say you know this and this I still value like I wanted to go to France this summer and you know and these things but, but it's um, uh, you know it is part of the process that because I can be so hard on myself and say, you know, I should let go all of it now, you know, and be grateful that I have this opportunity. And, and I'm being told, no, 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 you just take your time. You know, it's not because I can drive myself very hard, you know, and then, and then I, I, I compare like when Ricky and, and, um, uh, and Emily were talking, I was, thinking, wow, you know, I'm so far from that still, you know. And mm. then I was able to say, yeah, but that's okay, you know, and not compare. It's okay, yeah. Frank. Huh? It's okay, Frank. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, we're about out of time here. And yeah, it seems to be a process until it's an instant. And then we'll see it never was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good to see you again, Frank. And... Uh, mm -hmm. Are we already at the end? We are. We are. I just got the one minute flash from, from the mound. Time so. to say goodbye. Oh, I knew Octavia was out there and John and Sarah. Oh, and Dan. There's Dan. And Rich and Mary and Alexa <laughs> <laughs> and Helena and Patrick uh, uh, and Miriam. Uh, good to see you all. Yeah, so we'll see you actually next week. I think we won't see you. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. So back to you, Jeff. Thank you all. Love you.